and I take off my glasses. Hello. Well, welcome to my sofa. Yay. So, I'm just going to talk about some stuff, because I can. So, one thing that's been going on, coronavirus. Oh no. Um, I currently have a head cold, like quite a bad head cold. It really hurts to swallow or breathe or do anything. Uh, but it's not coronavirus. But, I can't get any good, like, preventative uh, things like a uh, mask, which is quite popular in Asia, or uh, hand sanitizing gel, because it's all sold out, because everyone has gone crazy over the coronavirus, which um, it's kind of hard to tell if that's irrational or rational. So as of today, it is currently the 8th of February. It turns out that the coronavirus might have started as early as the new year, and it was sort of kept quiet for a couple of reasons. One, the, some people thought that it wasn't going to be a problem. And then other people, namely the uh, Japanese, the Chinese government, didn't want to have uh, news of its spread. And apparently they, they shut down people talking about it, which is kind of scary. And since it has spread to several countries... Uh, Japan included, considering that it's in close proximity, and Japan gets a lot of Chinese tourists. Um, as I am speaking now, there is a big old cruise ship with, I think, uh, I think it's got 3,000 people on it, 3,000 or 4,000 people on that ship, and a, uh, 50, maybe more than 50 people have... Oh, the camera stopped. Why would the camera stop? So, uh, where was I? A lot of people were sick from coronavirus, and, um, it seems like the Chinese government wants to keep it quiet. Um, maybe that's because they didn't think that it was going to be a threat, or maybe it's because they knew that it would be, and they wanted to try and contain it first. Either way, People were silenced on the matter, or some people just didn't really think that it was a threat. And um, it's had quite big repercussions. Like, the, the actual virus, uh, while it is kind of deadly, it's not like a massive, like, if you get it, you will die sort of thing. Like, the percentage is pretty low. But it's just that a lot of people that get it will have lower immune systems and then they're more likely to die from other things, you know, like pneumonia. If you're, if you're likely to die from pneumonia, then you're likely to die from the coronavirus is the sort of thing going on here. Um, but it's caused a lot of fear and it's made a lot of things get uh, delayed certain companies like apple have had issues with this and and nintendo as well it's yeah and it's the, the bigger thing for me i think is the social fallout from this you know like people are being kind of racist about it and there's yeah one man in in japan put up a sign saying no Chinese people and he inevitably got in a lot of trouble for that because that's ridiculous saying no Chinese people in my store um, but Japan's been quite lenient on the border control it's letting people from China in but it's not letting people from that area in which is okay maybe that's fair enough it's a really grey subject like either you let people in and they spread illness potentially or you don't let people in and protect your country, but it looks kind of bad to just not 
<laughs> let people into your country. Um, and yeah, there's the there's the cruise ship that is docked outside of uh, Yokohama, and I think it's got 51 people, may, maybe more than that by now, uh, with um, with coronavirus. And if it, it's another weird case, like if they let the people in, then you know th there was the potential to spread the virus. But by keeping them on the ship, everyone on the ship is far more likely to get the virus because they're all contained together. So, yeah, I I don't know what, what is right or wrong in that case. Um, and uh, one Japanese man killed himself uh, seemingly in relation to the coronavirus. Uh, it seems that he either felt guilty of the way that the governments had been keeping it quiet or maybe he just feared for the potential of the of the virus or maybe he even thought that he had contracted it and he was bound to give it to other people but yeah sadly a man's body was found like crumpled at the bottom of a building um i guess there was no witnesses or at least no one that's come forward um but yeah it looks like suicide and it's crazy it's it's crazy the way that it's it's really one of those like butterfly effect things that a virus spreads out and people around the world are having like all these crazy issues so that's going on in the world uh trump didn't get impeached um that's not surprising no no one has ever successfully been impeached um so yeah there's that but hopefully it means that people won't actually vote for him again. Um, yeah, so that's all the doom and gloom out of the way. Uh, now I'm going to talk to you about just stuff, just nice stuff, now that I've, you know, addressed the elephant in the room. Uh, one nice thing is this chocolate. Mental. Look at this. GABA for sleep. It's chocolate with GABA in it, and it makes you sleep crazy look at that wall of text it was i found it in a like a drugstore but gaba has been popping up in lots of things recently i've seen in like milkshakes and coffees and stuff and i believe it is basically a chemical that is like a um a natural um like i think like muscle relaxant and sort of um, painkiller I my brain isn't working right now I've got like I said before I've got a terrible head cold and I can't think straight but yeah they put it into chocolate and it's I guess they put in enough in this one to actually give you a drowsy feeling um, but yeah how lovely is that I, <laughs> I kind of like it this packaging looks disgusting though. Look at that. It does look like medicine. And it looks like diarrhea medicine to be honest. But whatever. Um Yeah. <laughs> what else is on on the agenda? Right, so um I have been looking into coding. I've been looking at a uh, game maker language and that's been going pretty well. And then it suddenly struck me that I actually have a lifetime a lifetime course on Unity. My brain isn't working. I have a lifetime course on Unity, and um, maybe it would just be better if I learned Unity. So I, I'd sort of put the brakes on that for now, but I've been learning some basic code, and I've got, well, I've got a wealth of games in my head, but for initial small projects I've got three things in mind um, one is an arcade racing game um, that I can probably I could probably start off with that one but I think that I won't one is for a sort of dungeon crawler that I had the idea for uh, maybe about six years ago now when I watched the movie Lady Hawk with Matthew Broderick and um, the actor what is his name 
he was in Blade Runner. Anyway, the 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 other guy. Uh, yeah, they're in that movie. And I I was watching Lady Hawk, and I got got the idea for a game from that a long time ago. And then the other one is a point and click adventure. Uh, based on the works of Raymond Carver. I was going to start off with that one because I thought that point and click would be the easiest program, but it sort of like came across to me that while the interface might be the easiest, the way that I have it in my head, I would need to do a lot of uh, animation and I would need a lot of if this narrative path happens, this happens, and um, I think maybe I'm not strong enough for that yet, so that's that's going to be there for sure, I'm going to do that. Um, I started planning that one out in depth, and I've like drawn out maps of uh, scene by scene, but I have sort of come to a roadblock with that, so I'm going to try and get a bit more um, code literate first, and I'm going to probably start on the probably the dungeon crawler because it's a lot easier to just actually you know what no no i'm gonna go back to the uh, arcade racing game because once i have the mechanics for the 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 driving and the navigation of the cars done then all i need to implement is the tracks and then the uh overall ui and um menu screen so hopefully that will that will come about i'm trying to get one of these done by summer that's my intention um other other news for me is that i will most likely start um other news for me is that i'll most likely start interning at a well at a fairly well-known indie publisher um i'm not gonna say who it is because it might all fall through and I don't want to like you know there's no point in talking about it in that much detail um and yeah so that would be nice start to get a bit of a look into the game world um it's gonna be my first real step in which is lovely because it it always seems so impenetrable to get in if you don't know um like graphic design or, or coding and I, I'm very like outer rim on both of those. So yeah, it'll be a nice, nice step in hopefully. All right. And um, other things that I'm going to talk to you about are games on my radar. There's games that are on my radar. Um, the first one that I'm going to talk to you about, I'm going to have some gameplay up there, and it is it's it's uh it's Helvetti which is a sort of 2D combo fighting game. That No, that sounds like it's a fighter. It's not a fighting game. It's a uh, 2D combo combat game, you know, sort of like a 2D Devil May Cry, sort of narratively and artistically influenced by Celtic and Germanic folklore, and you get to have, like, beasts attack you and then you do like a summon and like a spirit beast will come and swipe at them and stuff it's pretty cool uh hopefully there'll be combat combat footage right behind me and you'll be able to see what i'm talking about uh it sounds amazing and the feedback when you're playing is really good like the there's real weight in the uh attacks and the movement which is really really nice um I, I was looking at it on Kickstarter a long, long time ago, and then it turns out that uh, a friend of a friend is working on it. So that sort of pushed me over to be like, yeah, let's put my money into it. And just by playing the demo, I feel pretty glad that I did, and I'm really looking forward to seeing the rest. Um, I believe I'm going to be getting that on Switch, so when that comes out, I might just do a full-on review of it. Yeah, so that's that's on my radar, Helvetti, sort of Northern European folklore combo combat thing. So yeah, and it looks gorgeous, sounds great.
another game, also through Kickstarter that I've become aware of, is Hunt the Night, which looks absolutely gorgeous. Um, again, I'm going to be playing this on Switch when it comes out. Um, it just, ah, uh, you know, I I can't really put into words. You just have to see it. I'll, I'll hopefully, again, have some stuff back up here, and you can see how gorgeous it looks. And um, I haven't played a demo of this. There might actually be one, and I've probably just not looked hard enough for it. And it looks like it's got quite a bit of, like, Symphony of the Night, uh, influence for the art style and the general, maybe the general gameplay. I can't, I can't be a hundred percent sure because, like I say, I haven't played the demo. But that's on my radar. I'm really looking forward to that coming out. Switch is basically turning into my indie, you know, handheld, uh, lovely thing with occasional big boys on there. I've got a couple games to review on the Switch. Um, old games they're not like it's not like exclusive or anything but there's one game that i'm think is the worst game i've ever played and it has really good critical feedback so i'm really surprised so i'm going to talk about that pretty soon uh i've been playing um final fantasy 9 on my switch and i've been meaning to make a video about final fantasy 9 so I'll get on that so if if you want me to make that Please put a comment about it saying, like, do the Final Fantasy IX because then I'll feel a bit more motivated to do it because um, I've got so many projects sort of, like, dragging me all in different directions. Blimey. I've also got next to me a PS Vita, which is really, really, you know, it died last year, didn't it, the v Vita? Uh, some people would say that it died way before that, but... Uh, the Japanese market for it is a lot bigger. I don't play a lot of those Japanese games because a lot of them are just like dating simulators or like creepy jiggle simulators. And I don't, yeah. um, but again, this is also my <laughs> my other indie handheld lovely thing. I mean, the Vita is such a nice piece of hardware and it's just such a shame that it didn't catch on because um, for a while I didn't have a TV and I'd stream uh, PS4 games through here and play PS4 on Vita. Crazy. Uh, I played Destiny yeah, Destiny 1 through here. It was great. Um, and yeah, there are some really good games that are just on the Vita. You can probably get them tons of other places, but it's so small and compact. Yeah, God. Anyway, yeah, there's no point in tooting the horn for the Vita anymore because it is buried. Um, but the Switch is picking up from where the Vita left off with having tons of indies and, you know, brilliant. I'm also working on a No Man's Sky video. Um, Maybe. It might go down the drain if I don't have enough to say about it. Because generally, I don't want to do anything if I don't have, like, a strong thing to say about it. Because otherwise, you know, what's the point? Um, yeah. And now that I've got a camera, I'm hopefully going to be doing more things around Osaka. Because, you know, I love the city. And uh, I think there's a market for people watching stuff about the city. So, again, if you want me to do stuff about the city, please just write a comment and say, show me around Osaka City, and I'll do that. Um, I'm probably going to do a little bit of that anyway, but it would, again, be nice to know where to put my motivations. Yeah, I thought that I had more to talk about, but uh, my, my sick brain has just washed it all away. But I wanted to get this done now while I had idea because otherwise it's just going to go away and you know yeah so just to recap the world is on fire um games are good chocolate is good kickstarter is good people are bad I can't like that 
Um, anyway, see you next time. Well, I won't see you, but you'll see me. Unless you're, you know, just listening to this and, like, leaving the video in the background somewhere. Um, in which case, um, talk to you soon.